Um, my name is Justin, and I'm an engineer on the Polymer team. Uh, you can do the Twitter stuff there. Uh, I'm going to talk today about dependency injection with custom elements. Um, first, let me ask how many people use dependency injection in their web apps today? I used it in a Flash app. In a Flash app, yes, action script. Uh, and how many of uh, you uh, use it because of Angular? Okay, it's all the same people. Um, so, uh, yes, dependency injection is one of the most popular features of Angular, as far as I can tell. Um, so I'm going to talk about that psych, because uh, I'll explain we can't really do dependency injection in custom elements, and that's what this talk is about. So first, let's quickly cover dependency injection in case you're one of the people who didn't raise their hands. Uh, so what is it? So here's a little code example of a class that has a dependency. Uh, hopefully that's big enough for you to read. In the constructor there, we're creating a new GitHub API object and storing it. And then over on the right-hand side, uh, we just create this new issue list object, and when it gets created, it will make its own dependency, the GitHub API. Uh, dependency injection says this is bad. And instead of doing this, you do something a little more complicated, but actually makes your life a lot easier in the long run. So you can see on the left here, this issue list class, instead of calling a constructor, it just gets past the dependency that it needs in the constructor. And then on the right-hand side, there's some kind of boilerplate of setting up you know, what you would call an injector or dependency uh, injection container. And you basically tell it when somebody asks for GitHub API, you know, uh, return the GitHub API object and they ask for uh, the issue list, return that, and you'll notice there's no constructors uh, for the issue list thing. The container magically calls the constructor and gives it the GitHub API, and everybody's happy. Um, so you'll hear a couple, a couple terms with dependency injection. One is inversion of control. This refers to the fact that you don't call constructors. Constructors are kind of called automatically for you by the container. Um, and this is similar to what they call the tell, don't ask principle, which means that uh, don't ask for a dependency, don't call a constructor, but tell your container, uh, tell the thing that's in control of you what you need and it will provide it for you. Um, so the principles here, don't call constructors. They're bad, they have a tight coupling. Uh, just declare what you need in the arguments of your constructor. Uh, so why would you want to do this? Uh, the biggest thing is it decouples your implementations. Uh, you, you can swap out the implementation for a different one. Uh, commonly, this is used for testing, so you can provide a mock and make sure that your thing interacts with the other thing in the way that you expect. Um, and another, besides testing, you can also have scoped implementations. Uh, part of your app needs uh, you know, one kind of file system API and another part of your app needs a different kind of file system API. So now let's talk about custom elements also very quickly, in case you haven't used them. Custom elements are very simply a way to create your own HTML tags. So the first thing we have here on the left is a class that extends HTML element, and when, uh, when it's created, it, it writes something to the console. Uh, at the bottom left, you just register this element with the uh, document, and then it knows to create it whenever it sees one. And then the upper right here is the Abby document, which just has a my element in it. And when it's created on the console, you see hello elements. So custom elements are fundamentally pretty simple. Uh, the big thing you'll notice here is there is no constructor call at all. Uh, so now let's get to the, the, the real conflict here. Um, there's a fight between custom elements and dependency injection, and that is all based around that constructor call. So dependency injection relies on there being a container and that container calls the constructors for you with the dependencies provided. Custom elements are constructed by the browser, and it calls the constructor with no arguments because it might just see a tag on the page. So instead of dependency injection, we're going to do something which I call document-centric dependency resolution. So you don't actually inject something, but you still are able to resolve your dependencies. Um, so let's cover the type of things you might want to uh, depend on in a web app. You want, might want to depend on other elements, if you're an element. You might want to uh, depend on plain JavaScript objects, or have some kind of factory or provider for one of those things, so you can stamp out multiple elements or get multiple uh, objects. And then we have this idea of location, because in a document you have a tree, an element can be in a place in that tree. And so we typically have two places we want to get dependencies from, uh, from above you, from ancestors, and from below you as descendants. Um, so this is showing you can request things from above you, and for below you, oftentimes you want to wait for something from below you. You, uh, 
you might have some kind of plug-in or you need some child element to be there so you can process it. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this problem? We're going to use events. Events are pretty awesome. Um, they bubble, which lets you handle them at any level in your document. Uh, they're cancelable, so once you handle them, you can say, I've handled it, stop, uh, stop propagation. And in our case, they're really awesome because they're synchronous, which means you can fire an event. It can be handled somewhere up the tree, and then on the very next line after you fired that event, you can look at it to see if it got handled in the proper way. So this makes us happy. All right, so here's what we do to, to kind of uh, emulate dependency injection. Uh, so you fire an event to request a dependency. Uh, somewhere else in the tree, you handle that event and provide the dependency to the event object that it, that it received. And then lastly, you retrieve the dependency from the event object. So I'll show you how it's done. The first thing we'll look at is an element, uh, this is a custom element that is requesting something. So in the attached callback, which is called when the element enters the document, it's gonna call this API it has on itself uh, called request provider. And it gives it a name, that's a key, and then it invokes the provider. So it says, uh, you know, give me a function which will make a thing for me and then call it, and that's my a thing. Uh, request provider is a very simple idea. Basically, it creates a custom event, and I call it a request provider event, strangely enough. Um, this thing bubbles, and it dispatches it, and then the very next line after it dispatches it, it just goes and gets the provider out of the event detail. Um, so this is something that could be done in, uh, in any kind of library. <laughs> and then let's look at the provider. So the provider also, when it's attached to the document, it says, I want to provide a thing. And here's a function, the factory, that will create a thing. And the provide method is very simple. It says it's just gonna store the factory in a map. And there's a, the thing that makes it all go is this event listener that uh, listens for this uh, request provider event. And then if it has uh, a dependency or a factory to provide for this thing in its provider's map, it will, uh, these are the two lines inside this if statement here, it sets the factory uh, onto the event detail and then it stops propagation of the event. So what's happening here is the event bubbles up until somebody says, oh, I have one of those things. I'm gonna stash it into the event object, stop propagation, and then you can continue with so now let's do a demo. You okay? That should work now. Okay. Check, check. Yep. Um, so here's a very simple demo. Here it is. So this demo has uh, a parent element, um, actually two parent elements and one of them has a child element. And the idea with this demo is that the parent uh, wants to provide some kind of string to its, to its child. The string would just say, like, I'm a parent. And the child has a dependency on this string. The child says, like, I want to know, it's like a hello world demo, I want to know who to say hello world to. And so the idea is that this guy right here should just be able to get that dependency from his parent, and we're gonna move it around the document to show that dependency injection is document location aware. Um, and here's the definition of, let's see, the parent element, and it just calls this provide instance method, which says, I have a thing, and the thing, you can look it up if you, uh, under the key name. And in the child, here's the definition of the child element, it has the inverse call, which says, give me a thing with a key of name. And you'll notice that we do this in the attached callback. Uh, this is something that gives dependency resolution with events, I'll talk about this now, uh, a lot more power than dependency injection that goes into constructors. Because this event that's fired to request something will be refired every single time this, doc this uh, element is moved around the document, if you detach it and reattach it in a different place. So I will show you that in the, uh, in the demo now. Here are the two container elements, and here's the child element. And you can see that it says the parent is parent1 right here. That's just the string that the parent is providing. And if I click the reparent button, I'm moving this child element back and forth between the two. And you can see that the text here changes. And uh, that's because each parent is providing a different instance of this dependency to the child. Um, so you can imagine this would be useful for um, showing two different documents on the screen. And you have some document provider that needs to change depending on uh, what location in the screen you're at. 
Okay, back to the presentation. So that, it's actually fairly simple and, and extremely powerful. Um, the key idea here is to embrace the document. Uh, documents are mutable things and they have a tree and you want to use that tree. Uh, another thing you can do with this system is use elements as plugins. Um, I also work on um, Polymer Designer sometimes, which is a very big app. And Polymer Designer runs as an Electron app and also as a, a browser app. And uh, if you can imagine, accessing files is very different in those situations. So I created a file system um, kind of uh, abstraction represented as an element. So in Electron, you have an Electron file system element inside of your app. And uh, when you're in a browser, you have something maybe like a Google Drive file system in your app. Uh, and the app itself doesn't change. So it's just a config. This is just index.html that changes and you give it a different plugin. And the uh, plugin system works very similar to the other event system. It's a little different because you're listening for something below you. So in the app, you listen for a plugin event in your attach callback. And in a plugin, you fire an event uh, that just says, hey, I'm here, in the attach callback. So that's also a very powerful pattern. OK, so just to summarize the benefits of doing dependency resolution this way. Uh, the first is that they're automatically scoped. You have a tree, events bubble up the tree. You have different places in the tree where you can handle that event to provide different dependencies. Um, it also means that they're dynamic. As you move an element around or attach it or detach it, your dependencies can update. Um, you can request a dependency from above you by firing an event, and you can wait for a dependency from below you by listening for it. And uh, one awesome thing about this too is that doing things this way is more of a protocol than some kind of tight coupling to a library or a framework. Uh, these, these protocols are very uh, simple and any, uh, any element could implement them from scratch. Uh, so that's all I have for my quick talk. Thank you, here's how to contact uh, me and the Palmer team. And the demo that I put up there along with some Polymer behaviors that will automatically let you request and uh, provide dependencies is up at this URL on GitHub here.